Hello, everyone. I'm Meme Omogbai, um, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer of CAA. Welcome to another session, a discussion with our amazing program chair for the annual conference in Chicago 2022. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Teresa Avela. Teresa. Yes, hello, Mame. Thank you for, for coming together again and having uh, another chapter in our conversation. Um, I'd like to start um, this, this dialogue in asking if uh, maybe you'd like to talk more about um, the conference format. Well, thank you, Teresa. Um, I am delighted to say that at the beginning of this year, right after the last conference, I promised you that um, we're going to listen to you. Um, based on the results of that survey and the analysis of engagement, we now have for 2022 uh, a conference format that reflects what you told us you wanted in person as well as virtual. And so you notice I didn't say hybrid because I know it meets all kinds of things, to all kinds of people, but we're going to have that for all of you. You'll have in-person experience as well as a virtual experience, which for those who advocated that indicated that um, it gives them an opportunity to engage in a way that they otherwise would have been. And we all know in the current environment, uh, every opportunity to engage is a good thing. So we are delighted that the annual conference committee um, has uh, uh, put together an incredible program. The best way for you to participate is to join us live in Chicago, of course. And that is uh, February 16th through the 19th, live and in person will be at the Chicago Hilton and we look forward to seeing all of you. I don't know about you. I know I'm looking forward to engage you with real life humans, you know, and being able to actually eyeball people and uh, enjoy the incredible content that we have. Uh, I know that the annual conference committee um, and the program chair, Teresa, have done an incredible job curating the excellence and scholarship that is embodied in our membership. So come on, join us live in Chicago. And for those of you who are unable to do so, of course, as you know, March the 3rd through the 5th, we have the virtual portion of it. Um, we are hoping to have about 60 sessions for the all virtual and about 140 for the live and in-person version. So. And of course, as we've been saying, until April 14th, we'll have the recording available. So we look forward to an exciting conference in 2022. Now, uh, Teresa, can you say more about this meeting in Chicago? Because I know, like many people, I'm excited. <laughs> yes, and I, I, you know, I would like to help to clarify too some of the questions about um, the face-to-face. Right. We're going to be in Chicago in February 16th to the 19th, face to face. All the sessions are live. Um, and however, nothing will be streamed um, and nothing will be um, necessarily recorded unless otherwise allowed. Um, but we do have a large number of our members who have um, signed to allow us to maintain those recordings for them through April. Um, and if there are other elements that we can add to those recordings, we're also looking into expanding um, the sessions in that way. But for the in-person session, we're having everything live. Um, we're having a wonderful array of meetings that we hope you will also be attending. Um, and the individual sessions are running 90 minutes, which in the past mm -hmm. has been different. That's also something to highlight. Um, I think that allows us to do more. Um, and as a more intimate space, um, being that we have reduced the number of sessions per the response to the surveys by the membership where previously folks felt it was too big, maybe they got lost, there was too much going on, um, and, and maybe the conference had become diluted. We have really 
brought back the conference into a more intimate space um, mm -hmm. so that we will be able to come together and share our resources, share our scholarship, share our practices together. So really looking forward to that. Meme, um, we're hearing about um, international travelers and, and participants uh, who are intending to uh, come to the conference who are now facing issues with traveling. Um, how is CAA um, going to um, handle these kind of uh, issues? Good question, Teresa. Um, in the current environment, who knows what's going to happen? Um, and so uh, this is a good time, as good as any, to talk about it. For those that are presenting, um, one of the things that we uh, intend to do, and I would encourage those uh, participants affected, would be to pre-record their sessions. And uh, we'll do our best to add it on if they are part of a panel as part of the overall recordings that will be available at the end of the conference. Mm -hmm. Now for other non-presenters that may be affected, I think the key is for you to be engaged for the reasons you told us, for the scholarship, for the networking, and, and um, access to the content. Those are among the things you told us you want. And you can have all of them since it's circumstance beyond your control. Of course, we'll love to have you in Chicago. So if it turns out that for uh, there's uh, circumstances beyond anybody's control, you are unable to attend in person, of course, we'll miss you, but we'll, I strongly encourage you to participate virtually. That's a, a critical option that's available to you mm -hmm. that uh, otherwise wouldn't have been in the past. So we look forward to having you join us. But anyway, the overall takeaway is that, like you, we're going to be monitoring what's happening as this environment unfolds. My commitment to you is that we're going to do everything in our power to provide opportunities and options for engagement as they become known. Um, so I would encourage you to keep your eye peeled to the website, visit us often, and um, you will have opportunities for constant update. Again, go to collegead.org and you will always get updated information. Thank you. May, may. Um, and as I'm touching on um, the recordings that will be available, um, could you say more about the permissions for the 2022 conference and the recordings that will be made available? Uh, uh, thank you for that question. Because, uh, because of the uh, different format this year, uh, we have the overall um, uh, um, agreement for all the presenters. And we have given the presenters an option to opt out, to have their presentation recorded. And um, again, remember, there are privacy requirements. And um, there are also those uh, who are totally comfortable having uh, the, uh, their sessions recorded. And those who do, when you go to uh, register, you are going to see the cute little camera. Uh, at some point in December, when you see that camera, you know that session will be recorded. When you don't see the camera, you know that the session will not be recorded. And mm -hmm. in any case, all the recordings will be available um, through April uh, the 14th, as I indicated earlier. And uh, only in-person uh, folks opt out. So all the virtual, of course, they have already agreed to be recorded. For the in-person, as Teresa pointed out, no live streaming, nothing, you are in person, the idea is for you to enjoy it. And so for those presenters who um, have opted where you see the camera, they'll be recorded and you'll have all of them available through uh, the 14th. So. I think it's important to note, though, um, that we also are responding to membership in terms of not recording the question and answer sessions. I think that's also something that um, folks might be interested in, in knowing more about. But but yes, I think that's wonderful that we'll be able to um, offer those recordings. 
Uh, thanks, Teresa. I think that, uh, as you can see, we are committed to listening to you and uh, making sure we deliver on the experience that you expect and uh, make it as enriching whether you participate in person in Chicago or for circumstances beyond your control, you are only able to participate virtually. So um, we're looking forward to that. And to that point, um, we did have a, um, a question that, that arose specifically um, in relation to participating. Um, and this is where the recordings may help to expand access and participation, where an individual um, coming out of India um, and international uh, participants in general, presenters may start to confront some issues with travel bans or, or issues with getting permission or visas to travel to the U.S. Um, and they're on the face-to-face -face panel. Um, there have been some questions about, you know, what can we do? Uh, and I think offering those recording, um, a recording of those presentations will allow us to at least capture what was intended for the face-to-face. -face. Um, and, and I think we're talking about looking into adding it into the recording session. So we are looking for ways to um, include and expand. Uh, and the digital online um, elements are being engaged um, as, as has been discussed previously, right? We are looking to use and engage technology. Yeah, and to that point, we realize that um, with folks unable to come to Chicago, um, again, some of the circumstances among the things we're facing now is COVID. Um, like you all, every day we wake up, we hear some more story about some variant countries that were fine, no longer fine, or whatever the issues may be. I think it's important for you to know that your safety is of particular uh, concern to us. Uh, above all, it is vital that we maintain everyone's safety. And so based on that, uh, we are looking to see what the city of Chicago is doing. Again, we are all taking care of all of the protocols like us, the leadership of any city, Chicago included, are following the same guidelines and putting things in place. So it will come as no surprise to you that they are monitoring this closely. Among the things they do and we intend to do is to monitor what the city of Chicago requires, what the Hilton Hotel requires. And of course, we're looking at what this means internationally. For some, it may require uh, visa restrictions for those traveling internationally where it turns out that uh, those things occur, I think that um, it is, we have a commitment that I'm making to you right now. We'll do our best to follow the CDC guidelines, the city guidelines, and, and we will continue to monitor the uh, international restrictions and hope that uh, as you make your decisions, as these issues come up, you participate regardless of the circumstances because this format of having in-person and virtual component and recording available gives you many choices. Uh, on our end, we'll do our best to continue to keep you up to date. Be on the lookout on our website. We'll continue to update as we all know this is required. But in any case, preparing for that in person, uh, I think it's important to be vaccinated. Um, it is important to follow all the safety protocols. As we get closer, we'll be in a position to tell you, give you more information as they become available. So please keep an eye out on the website. Uh, we'll continue to keep you up to date and we hope that um, you'll be on the lookout and for, so we all take care of each other as we prepare for this conference. Yeah, so important um, as we're looking ahead. Um, and, and as we're thinking about that, um, there's also uh, been questions about how to maybe garner support to attend or participate at the conference. Uh, and maybe I wondered if you'd like to speak to, to that. Um, well, a number of ways. Um, as you all know, we all come to the conference for the richness of the content, incredible scholarship and network. And so um, 
one of the ways you can participate is also the other aspect of coming. It is our annual membership meeting. So we hope you will come in and vote for board members. That's an important governance piece. It's your association and you have a voice. And uh, the annual meeting is an opportunity for you to weigh in. And one of the things I hope to do this particular year is to have uh, a town hall. We want to hear from you. Uh, we want to engage with you. And so for me, I'm particularly excited to look forward to that. And um, in addition to participating in all these voting activities and having your voice heard, another way is to give. Uh, so many of you last year responded incredibly well in the Paid Forward Fund. They donated and were able to help very many people. So please give. Um, I like to say give of your time, talent, and treasure. I've spoken of your time coming in there. Uh, the treasure is your money. The talent is the richness of the content, without which we don't have a conference. And so... Um, in engaging with your talent, uh, we have your submissions, the applications to participate, and uh, the content you submit. You know, as soon as we end one conference, we'll begin in the next one. Perhaps Teresa has more to say about that because she's a program chair, but um, the idea is that you engage through your talent as well. And I will look forward to, and there are volunteer opportunities, speaking of talent. Well, that's actually so, where my experience lays okay. um, as you speak to this. And, I, and you, I think about folks donating and contributing and supporting membership if they can. We've also talked about a pay it forward registration if you can. There are tiered levels of membership, which also allow us to contribute um, in, in ways that we may, um, our, you know, our, our jobs may allow us to. Um, but there's also opportunity to volunteer. Um, when I was a graduate student, um, uh, you know, wanting to come to the conference, but wasn't necessarily able to afford, uh, was concerned about how to afford um, being at the conference, um, you could attend. And currently we do have a small number of volunteer opportunities um, for conference attendees uh, to volunteer and help and gain all access uh, registration as compensation. Um, and as a graduate student at different times, um, I've been a monitor in rooms. Um, and was able to right, serve the membership, serve the conference, and at the same time gain um, so much wonderful access to the network of people that were present in the events, and, and, and oftentimes was able to choose how to participate and how to volunteer. And so for folks that are looking for um, those opportunities, certainly um, look at the website and seek those out and, and, and ask ask for what it is that, that we need. Um, we're, we're, we're looking for that information, and, and that's what this type of session is about. Uh, so yes, please seek for that. The, please look for those volunteer opportunities. Um, and Teresa, I understand that uh, you also have uh, opportunities for folks and positions to serve in a council of readers. So that's, right. um, that's another way. Again, that goes to the talent um, that folks can can uh, uh, offer to CAA. It's your association. And service in these roles are critical uh, on the committees, uh, Council of Readers, bringing new expertise. And um, that's what enriches the conference. And that's why so many of you, so many of us engage. And so um, I'm excited about this conference uh, because we are continuously learning and responding to what our members want, this new environment. And uh, as it emerges, because it's constantly changing. So uh, come on over to Chicago and join us. And um, if you are unable to join us in Chicago, we look forward to engaging with you virtually and look forward to an amazing, enriching, and rewarding experience for the 2022 conference. Again, Theresa, thank you and your committee and for the amazing work uh, that you've all been doing. I can't wait to sink my teeth into what you have <laughs> planned for us uh, for the conference. Uh, thanks a lot.
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and just want to touch on the fact that the committee will have two positions open. We we are looking to fill those um, and they're from all walks of our profession. So if anyone's interested in being more engaged and more involved in the annual conference committee in helping to, um, you know, the final uh decision making on the sessions, on scheduling, um, and, and being part of these very critical and important um, discussions around um, as the conference grows and develops, um, how we can make things better or make a difference. Um, we, we invite that. So please, please look for that opportunity as well. And yes, I look forward to the conference. Really excited about it. And one final note, please keep those comments and suggestions coming. Uh, feel free to go to programs at collegeart.org and submit your questions, submit your comments, and um, your engagement is vital for the uh, vibrancy of the conference and for the vibrancy of your association. So, uh, Thanks a lot, and thank you for visiting with us during this conversation. Bye.